Let's now talk about the seven testing principles. Testers around the world and over history agreed upon seven principles that should lead testing, whether you're testing a game or a website or an Android app or an embedded system, these seven principles are applicable to all fields in software testing. The first principle states that testing shows presence of defects. This is obvious. We all know that testing shows presence of defects. But what we mean by this principle is that if testing didn't find bugs or defects, that doesn't mean that they are not present, okay? Bugs are there and you have to find them. If you can't find them, that doesn't mean that they don't exist. The second principle is exhaustive testing is impossible. You can test everything. It is impossible to test everything, okay? The combinations are infinite. So you try to perform most of the testing. You try to cover a big percentage of functionalities or risks, but you can't cover all the functionalities or all the risks or all the scenarios that the user will perform when he uses the software. The third principle we have here is early testing. Early testing doesn't mean that you test in the morning. It means that you have to perform testing or design testing early in the life cycle. When the project begins, that is when testing should begin. Testing doesn't begin after development, okay? No, it goes with development hand by hand, parallel in the same time. The fourth principle is defect clustering. What does it mean? We have a principle in economy, it's called Pareto chart, okay? This principle states that 80% of the problems are caused by 20% of the causes. So 80% of the time that you expend trying to find defects will solve only 20% of the defects in the software. And on the other side, 20% of the time that you spend on testing will find 80% of bugs. So the good tester who knows which part of the software deserves that you spend your time in it, spend the amount of time in it, okay? If you spend the amount of time or effort in the 80%, you will only find 20% of the bugs. So if you have time pressure and you can't test everything, you should focus on the parts of the software that will find the 80% of the results. When you use defect clustering and find bugs and report them to the developer, then he will give you the software again so that you find more defects. If you use the same test cases and strategies that you used before, this will not find more bugs. Why? This is what we call the best side paradox. When you use a best side, if you use it every time, it will not find any new bugs, okay? This is in real life, but in software, it's the same. So what should we do, okay? We found 90% of the bugs and we need to find more bugs. You have to change the way you think about the software, either by bringing a new tester, and that would be expensive, or you, the tester, try to think about the software in a different way. Try to cover another part of the software. Try to cover another aspect of the software. You thought about the software in the functional way. Think about it in the security, okay, now. So you will find new and more defects. The sixth principle is testing is context dependent. Testing changes from field to field. Testing changes from application to another application. So if you are testing a game that is designed for children, this will take like, I don't know, two days of testing, but consider that you are testing an e-commerce website. This is a bigger project. This might take one week or one month. But if we are testing a medical device that we will use in cancer treatment, this will take a lot of time, okay? Not because it is big only, but there is a risk of leaving defects and not solving them. If you leave a defect in a children game, it's easy, okay? We can solve it in a new release, but you can't have this risk in a medical device or a safety critical device. So what you are testing leads you in the time that you will take during testing. The last principle is absence of error fallacy. What does that principle mean? Okay, we test the software and the developer fixed the bugs, okay? And we delivered software to the client and he is not happy. Why isn't he happy? Okay, like this picture. Maybe I ordered chicken in a restaurant, okay? And you gave me a very beautiful plate of cake. Does this make me happy or satisfied? No, because this is not what I asked for, okay? So it's not only important that you find bugs 
this is important yes but with this the more important is that you give that customer what he asked you for you have to understand the customer and what is his needs and what does he want and give him the software that he wants that is what makes the customer satisfied